and sometimes uh, they have was uh, an old man who asked me uh, how much it would cost to uh, drive him to Sunnabal. <laughs> and then I, I laugh and I said, uh, I can't do it. I'm an inmate of Milka. Ah, okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Well, one of the key principles of the Danish system is this idea of normalization, that your punishment is that you are you're taken away from your families and from society and from your jobs and you're spending time in prison. So that loss of liberty is, is the core of your, of your sentence. This is Mulaker Prison, a picturesque converted farm that is home to some of Denmark's toughest criminals. Here, brick walls and barbed wire are replaced by rolling hills and turning windmills. To outsiders, it may look more like a summer camp than a penitentiary. Danish open prisons are constructed to replicate life on the outside. The aim is to help inmates to successfully reintegrate back into society. In Denmark, the death penalty does not exist and there are no life sentences. The majority of inmates are housed in one of the eight open prisons. Closed prisons are reserved for at-risk inmates who are more likely to become violent or attempt to escape. A standard prison cell at Mulaker consists of a single bed, a desk, a mobile phone, and a flat screen TV. Prisoners earn wages and receive monthly stipends to purchase their own food. They are only confined to their cells between 9.30 p.m. and 6.30 a.m. Jesper Christiansen is serving six years in prison for drug dealing. Yeah. At the height of his criminal career, Jesper says he was earning 100,000 kroner a week. Wild catch. At 22 years old, this is his first convicted felony. During their time in prison, inmates are given the option to commit themselves to full-time work, studies, or the drug and alcohol rehabilitation program. Jesper currently studies economics and works as the prison bus driver. The prison grants special permission for students like Jesper to use their personal laptops with internet access in their rooms. Stay in the bed and see some television, work out in the gym, study some math. <laughs> Outside their duty hours, inmates enjoy relative freedom and are allowed to do what they want within the prison rules and regulations. Have some lessons. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, in 1997, the Danish prison system implemented sweeping changes. And the door this way. Educational and recreational activities were added to enhance prison stays. <coughs> Molecare offers carpentry, glass blowing, painting, and organized sports. You can give the inmates computers and uh, televisions and a, a lot of things, but it is they never forget that it is a, a prison because uh, they are closed in, in inside uh, half past nine in the in the evening, and so they f so they can really feel that it's a prison. Guards at Mulaker don't carry weapons. Each section of the prison has handcuffs, pepper spray, batons, and shields. However, they're rarely used. In some Danish prisons, the families reside alongside prisoners in designated wings. Children may live with their parents inside the prison until the age of three. Sentencing boards often attempt to place offenders in prisons close to their homes to make visitation more accessible. This helps to maintain a positive family environment, even when one or both parents are incarcerated. Um, I think some of the biggest advantages are things like encouraging um, prisoners to have relationships with people on the outside, so encouraging those social bonds to be maintained from a psychological per perspective. Of course, that's very important that, um, that these individuals don't feel completely excluded from the rest of society. 
Brian Andresen is a former prisoner. He served two and a half years for drug dealing. Today, he is a project leader at Sauten Denmark, an organization that works on behalf of children within prison parents. My case is a little different. I was one of the lucky ones who had a very great family who supported me all the time. Everything from my grandparents, uh, my whole local community supported me in getting out. So if I hadn't had my family all through the imprisonment and the release of prison, I don't know. Every third weekend, inmates who have exhibited good behavior are granted outside leave. This Christmas, Jesper plans to spend a week with friends and family. It's an experience he does not take for granted. The most is being with my friends. Um, I miss that. And all the parties and something like that. But just be together. The Danish system emphasizes the importance of mutual respect between guards and prisoners, yes. mm -hmm. thus attempting to create a more humane prison environment. We, we can talk nice to each other, but uh, maybe a half an hour later, I'm going to fight with the inmates, maybe because he has uh, taken some drugs or taken some uh, alcohol or something. So I have no problem to, to change. Uh, it is in the natural way to do it. All the guards are saying they are criminals. They are doing something wrong, and then they are going watch, or then they're taking. You can see uh, over there. There's a camera. Sometimes you can see following you. I think in, in some ways guards are in a very difficult position because they have this dual role. Their primary role is of course security and maintaining the security of the institution. Um, but on the other hand they do have this secondary role which is to encourage relationships and to make the prisoners feel comfortable and uh, set an environment in which change is possible. As part of his work at Sauten, Brian tries to teach this practice to prison guards in training. If, the, if a prison guard have to deliver a message to an inmate, they put the key in, swing the door open, say blah, 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 and then they're out again. One thing they have to remember that I, got, I try to teach them is that this cell, this is their home. This is the inmate's home. This is where he lives. This is his life. So every time you go in there, you go into his home. And you would never go over to your neighbor and kick the door in and say, blah, 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 and go again. Would, no one would. So treat them as you're going into their home. Knock on the door, go in and have eye contact like you would to, with another, a normal person and just tell them. It takes 30 seconds extra, but you give this inmate something of a relation. The presence of illicit drugs is another point of criticism in the Danish system. The Danish Prison and Probation Service estimates that one third of all inmates are drug addicts in some form. But you see, mostly it is cannabis. I think we take it every day, uh, a little piece, maybe uh, one point, uh, one gram, uh, half a gram every day, uh, or more. 91.8 gram here, cannabis, is found inside the prison. Most drugs are smuggled in by visitors, who guards are not permitted to frisk. I think it would be good if we could go uh, a little bit closer to uh, those people who's coming into the prison. Despite these challenges, Denmark boasts one of the lowest recidivism rates in the world. This means that within the two years of release, only 26% of prisoners will reoffend. This figure is an improvement from the rate reported in 2003 by the Danish Prison and Probation Service. However, lawmakers are keen on improving these numbers further. Well, we need to focus more on education. We just made a four-year plan to make more education, to make more workshops, to make this, have a plan for the time you're in prison and have a plan for the time you're released from prison. Um, so that should probably help us bring down 
the rate of people who return to prison. As the prison bus driver, Jesper follows the schedule given to him by prison administration. We're going uh, out to jail to get some uh, inmates from school. Uh, they're finished, so I picked them up downtown. Why is this the best job in prison? Because you're free like a bird. And you can do whatever you want and just driving and be yourself. His job depends on mutual trust between guards and inmates. One step out of line and Jesper risks losing what he feels is the best job in the prison. There are, of course, some psychological challenges associated with, for example, serving in an open prison sentence where the you don't have the same bars and uh, locks and in some ways then those become psychological bars and locks that keep you within the prison walls and that's a very challenging thing of course then you feel it's up to you to maintain your prison sentence and that's an odd position to find oneself in. Although it is lenient compared to many other countries, Denmark's approach to crime and punishment is highly effective. So have they invented the wheel when it comes to prisoner rehabilitation? The reason the Scandinavian prison system works is because it operates within a Scandinavian uh, culture and value system and welfare state and all of the things that make this part of the world special um, or unique in its own ways. And I think it's optimistic to expect that one could simply translate this prison system and this justice system into, for example, a North American context. <laughs> 